Hey everybody, welcome to this lesson on the chain of infection, a fundamental concept in healthcare. We will discuss each of the links in the chain of infection, how each link contributes to infection, how diseases spread through populations, and how the chain can be broken. The chain of infection consists of six links, each playing a vital role in the spread of infections. The links are the infectious agent, the reservoir, the portal of exit, the mode of transmission, the portal of entry, and the susceptible host. The first link is the infectious agent. The infectious agent is a pathogen that has the potential to cause an illness. Pathogens can be bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, and prions. Not all pathogens are inherently bad, but there are some factors that determine whether or not a pathogen can actually produce disease. The strength of the pathogen, the number of pathogens present, the effectiveness of a host's immune system, and the length of exposure to the pathogen all play a role in a pathogen's virulence, or ability to cause damage to a host. For example, if a person with a strong immune system is exposed to a small amount of influenza A for a short period of time, it is unlikely that they will develop disease symptoms. However, if a person with a weakened immune system is exposed to the same amount of influenza A for a short period of time, it is more likely that that person will develop symptoms. The second link is the reservoir. A reservoir is an environment or habitat where a pathogen can live and multiply. Imagine the home where the pathogen lives. Reservoirs can be things like people, animals, soil, water, food, feces, intravenous fluid, and equipment. The infectious agent depends on the reservoir for survival, so it can live and multiply enough to be transmitted to a susceptible host. Going back to our influenza A example, this virus can only live on surfaces outside of the reservoir for a very short period of time, but can survive for a long period of time inside of a human. The third link is the portal of exit. Pathogens have to be able to leave the reservoir in order to infect a susceptible host. The portal of exit from a human reservoir could be things like blood and body fluids. Some examples are respiratory secretions and anything exiting from the gastrointestinal or urinary tracts. Once again, returning to influenza A, the portal of exit would be droplets from a sneeze or cough. The mode of transmission acts as the delivery method. This is the fourth link. The mode of transmission determines how the infectious agent is transmitted from one host to another. It can occur through direct contact, such as kissing. Extremely small particles that remain suspended in the air, like those produced when you sneeze, or use of contaminated objects, such as needles. It's important to note that transmission of a pathogen can occur through direct contact, airborne contact, or indirect contact. For example, influenza A is primarily transmitted via virus-laden fluid particles that are formed in the respiratory tract of an infected person. If that person coughs or sneezes, the particles or droplets are expelled from the mouth or nose and can contaminate surrounding surfaces. The fifth link, the portal of entry, is how the infectious agent gains access to a new host, such as through the mucous membranes of the nose and mouth, the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and urinary tracts, or through incisions or wounds. Often a pathogen will enter the body of the susceptible host through the same route they exited the reservoir. For example, a person could contract influenza A by touching a contaminated surface and then touching their nose or mouth. The sixth and final link in the chain of infection is the susceptible host. The susceptible host is someone at risk of infection. There are a number of factors that affect susceptibility, such as age, health, comorbidities, or immune system strength. People with low immune systems are called immunocompromised. So far, we've used the chain of infection to discuss how one individual can infect another individual. But, as evidenced by the COVID-19 pandemic, diseases can spread through large populations extremely quickly. Lack of general understanding of disease transmission and disease prevention can greatly contribute to the spread of a disease. Other factors that can influence the spread of diseases within populations include population density, as areas with a high population density have a higher risk of transmission due to close contact between individuals. Travel, with air travel contributing significantly to the global spread of infectious agents because of the confined space, recirculated air, and the speed with which people can cross the globe. General immunity levels, as populations with high vaccination rates make it more difficult for diseases to spread. And environmental factors, such as climate, sanitation, and hygiene conditions can influence disease transmission. For example, waterborne diseases are more prevalent in areas with poor sanitation, 
Poor sewage sanitation can lead to contaminated water supplies, which can lead to diseases like dysentery. Now, let's explore how to break the chain of infection to prevent disease transmission. Antibiotics and vaccines can break the chain at the first link, the infectious agent. For instance, antibiotics effectively target bacterial pathogens, saving lives in conditions like strep throat. Some antibiotics, such as penicillin, kill bacteria by destroying the cell wall, while others, such as tetracycline, interfere with the ability of bacteria cells to reproduce. Cleaning, disinfection, sterilization, and pest control can break the chain at the second link, the reservoir, by using chemicals or extreme heat to kill bacteria and viruses before they can spread. Maintaining social distance and potentially isolating infected individuals can also break the chain at the reservoir. For example, between 2014 and 2016, countries in West Africa were able to better contain an Ebola outbreak by isolating infected individuals and tracing and isolating those who had come into contact with infected individuals. Proper hygiene, like hand washing, covering coughs, and using personal protective equipment, breaks the chain at both the portal of exit and mode of transmission. This prevents transmission of respiratory infections in healthcare settings. Hand washing is the number one way to prevent the spread of infection. Protecting potential entry points by using personal protective equipment such as masks or gloves helps block the portal of entry. For example, wearing gloves when handling contaminated materials reduces the risk of infection. Vaccination is a powerful tool to protect the susceptible host. It creates immunity, like a shield, against infectious agents. Think of it like a defense mechanism that safeguards against diseases like measles. Understanding the chain of infection is pivotal for healthcare professionals. It's the foundation for effective infection control, protecting both patients and healthcare workers. In summary, the chain of infection is a vital concept in healthcare. The chain contains six links the infectious agent, the reservoir, the portal of exit, the mode of transmission, the port of entry, and the susceptible host. Each of these links contributes to the spread of pathogens, both between individuals and throughout larger populations. It is possible to break the chain at each link through things like vaccination, cleaning and disinfection, and proper hygiene.